Hey there folks, welcome to this video and here I'm going to be giving a review for the Racers All-Star Series. Uh, the second of their Triple Crown editions uh, came through yesterday and I didn't get to watch it live at the time so I'm just going back and in retrospect giving some kind of thoughts and feelings about the event. Um, I thought it was quite interesting, I actually quite enjoyed watching it back. Um, even if like the kind of novelty of the Racers All-Star Series has gone away in recent times. I say recent times. This is something that's only been going a couple of months, but in the in the past few weeks, I feel like it's started to lose the kind of edge that it had. I don't know. I I've been enjoying it, but it doesn't seem to have the same energy that it did in season two. Uh, it doesn't attract like the same legends all the time. Uh, the grids are a lot more reduced in terms of the amount of people they've got and that's a bit of a shame. Um, season 2 was fantastic but Season 3, as much as I liked the idea of Triple Crown and I liked that they were all using the DW12, um, I don't get why we can't have all of the drivers using the same machinery in all of the events because I don't know what they're going to be using next week. It'd be cool if, as part of like a tie-in with 397, they were using, say, the Ferrari uh, GTE DLC that came out recently um, when they're doing Le Mans, or they're using the Norma LMP that they were using, what, season one, wasn't it? They were using the Norma LMP for a while, because... I have a feeling they're going to just go back to, oh yeah, we're going to use the old McLaren or the old Brabham for the Legends, and we're going to use the rebadged Formula Renault for um, the Sims and Pros. Because one of the things I really enjoyed about the first season was how some of the cars did change. And the reason why I enjoyed the fact that the cars changed was because we had different people being all different levels competitive in different cars. And that's true of sim drivers, that's true of pro drivers, and that's true of the legends. So I'd love to see it be like completely different machinery again at Le Mans. I said I was going to, um, after the first couple of races, go, yeah, it was nice and clean. But then there were just so many wrecks. There were some start line wrecks. There were wrecks that happened before the races actually started, which was a bit funny. Um, it's gone to the point where I'm not really frustrated by seeing people just wreck at the start anymore. But I do wonder what level of difficulty is that, given that like in this video recording, um, I ended up having a slight wreck. Well, when I say a slight wreck, I hit the end of pit wall at about 150 mile per hour going backwards. But he just completely destroyed the car. I would love to see it with like the damage turned fully up. Uh, I mean, I said the same thing in the Formula E Race at Home Challenge, and I said the same thing about uh, the Virtual Grand Prix when they started turning damage off the street circuits because people were following the advice of Julian Palmer. But yeah, I, I gotta say, I still really enjoy it. I'm looking forward to what the Le Mans one does, but at the same time, I fully expect the Le Mans one to be the final edition of the Races All Star Series. I'd love it to be like a kind of winter series. I think that's one of the things we've established through this whole thing. The sim racing stuff would be nice to do as a kind of off-season thing for a lot of the drivers who don't go off and do winter series. Um, especially like ones who aren't on the junior ladder who would typically go off and do winter series to gain points or experience. Yeah, those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. I've got a World Direct review coming up in a bit. Bye-bye for now.